Hi friends, it's Sarah from rufflesandrayboots.com and today we are making some high-end gnome ornaments or gift tags because we're doing the backs. If you'd like to make them, just boop, stick around. As always, please give this video a like so I know you're here crafting with me. It helps me with this YouTube algorithm as well. So I'm going to show you these from a couple different angles because I am so impressed with how they came out. If you remember, I'll put the link below. We made plaster gnomes in the summer and I had plaster. So I looked on Amazon. I found these adorable gnome keychains meant for resin, but I don't do resin. And I thought I could avoid the little edges like this and use plaster. Hmm. So I'm going to tell you for safety, mask up, use a dust mask. Now you're going to follow the instructions on the back of the plaster of Paris bag or tub and you're going to do one part water into a bowl, two parts Paris on top of that and let it sit. Don't touch it. I'm going to set up my workspace here because I am going to put this on a very flat surface so I can move it later. And then you can see here it's almost mixed in. It's very quick, but when you're combining the rest of it, use a, a spork or a spoon, something like a palette knife and use the fold method instead of stirring it to avoid bubbles. So out of all of these that I did, only one had a tiny little bubble in the bottom of its shoe. So my technique here is just basically to add a little bit using my fabulous spork and then using a bamboo skewer to sort of make sure I'm getting that plaster of Paris into all of the molds. Now the very tip up here doesn't really matter because we're going to end up breaking off the little hole for the keychain but you do have to get all of the little you know beard edges and the shoes which are very tiny the buttons so just make sure that you're gonna use something you can also use a popsicle stick but i felt that with all the little tiny details the skewer was a little bit better i am going to use a popsicle stick however because we're going to need to make sure that the backs of these are perfectly flat so that they are perfectly flush with our blank and for blanks i'll show you a couple different ones um, I'm going to be using, they're both from Michaels, so always in the wood section there, but you can use anything metal, wood, or uh, ceramic even, as long as you can adhere the plaster of Paris. Finished good to it, you are set. All right, so I'm just going to finish up this last one and make sure everything is scraped off and flat before I leave them to dry. And here they are, all dried. Look at this pop out super easily. So this one here came out really well detailed. You can see everything in the little pattern of the hat. This one here I end up, um, so you can see it's going to have no breakage at the very top, which is surprising because I end up breaking a couple other ones. But I didn't like this one because it has a big border around it and I thought it would look very cartoonish. All right, so this one I end up breaking the hat right there. Yeah, that stinks. But we're still going to end up using some of these even though I got mad right there and threw it off to the side. Wow, Sarah, a little temper tantrum. But look at that, even the tiniest little things are showing up. It just amazed me how well the plaster of Paris actually worked. So in order to clean them up, again, I still have my mask on. I urge you to do that as well. I'm going to use the edge of the skewer to like poke out any extra pieces. And I'm also going to be ending up using a sand block, a sanding block whatever they're called, I'm not sandpaper, use that. Um, but you can see here, it's amazing to me the detail that did not break. I end up breaking this hat off, however. <laughs> so let's just do that now, shall we? It's super easy, all I did is broke it off. And again, before you sand anything like this, go ahead and put your mask on. And then I just sanded it off and all of those are ready to paint super easy project and it's great if you have just a little bit of plaster of Paris you can actually um, uh, you know finish using that up if you want so these again I got from Michaels I got an oval and this little tiny shadow box which I thought was super cool I haven't made them yet because I figured everyone would have access to these rounds so um, all I'm going to do is turn them into ornaments by finding the center at the top. I'm going to put a little bit of masking tape on the front and back and use a drill bit, whatever size you would like, into a piece of wood so you don't, you know, drill through your counter or your crafting desk. And there you go. We're all ready and prepped to make them ornaments. So I'm going to paint both sides 
front and back with a white gesso or a white acrylic or a white chalk paint, doesn't matter, because I'm going to be decoupaging a napkin onto the back because I'm lazy. <laughs> but since I had some extra white paint, I'm also going to brighten up all of the beards and braids on my gnomes because Plaster of Paris is white, it's just not a very bright white. All right, so on the back here, I'm not gonna explain how to do decoupage, cause you probably know I added a little bit of Mod Podge, spritzed a single ply of a Buffalo check napkin with water and then applied it. I start with my fingers, I brayered it a little bit. And by the way, that sound is my sister's French bulldog. I, I can't go anywhere in the house where he doesn't follow me. So you're just gonna have to listen to this massive snorting sound right next to me. Okay, so I used sandpaper to clean off the edges and then I uh, used Mod Podge for the back layer to protect it. For my paint, I'm just going to use regular colors. So I used moss green and a ruby red that I added black to. So for both of these colors, I added black so that I could have sort of a vintage and sort of more weathered look than a very bright, you know, bright red and green Christmas look. So I'm gonna paint everything here. Again, it's like paint by number because you're just, everything is already impressioned like it's already easy to paint inside it and knock it outside of the lines <laughs> if that makes sense so you can see here i'm just using the same two colors on all of my gnomes red black and green and once they were done, I got a sealant. This one is from Americana. They also make paint and I'm just going to seal everything. I'm going to seal all of the gnomes for the front and the sides, but not the back. And then I'm also going to seal the front, which was painted of my wood round. And that way I can make sure that if they use these as ornaments, they're not going to chip right we want to make sure that paint is protected everywhere and i also added a little bit of glossy mod podge on the front there to give it a nice shine i am tying the world's slowest bow ever i'm not good at tying bows but i'm just using a 3 8 inch ribbon to try and make two bows of you know similar size <laughs> Like I said, this is not my strong suit. I have to look up a bow tying tutorial for every wreath that I make. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so here I'm going to just dovetail the edges and then I'm going to burn them to set them as well. And now it's just uh, assembly time. So if you're ever going to use twine, add a little bit of glue or Mod Podge to the end, you know, string it through your hole. And then while the glue ends are still wet, tie it and that thing will never come undone. All right, so I am just using a hot glue to affix my gnomes. I'm not sure if E6000 would be better. It's just so harsh that I thought maybe it would eat the back of the plaster. So all I'm gonna do here is just tack them down with some hot glue, add my little bow, and here they are. If you're gonna use them as package tags, you can use your Cricut or just a piece of cardstock on the back to add a to and from note. That's it for this quick craft. What do you think of it? Let me know in the comments section below. And as always, thank you so much for being here. Please like and subscribe for more crafty fun.